If you find these videos helpful, you can come and support us on Patreon. You can gain access to ad-free content, as well as more tests. Your support is appreciated. This part of the test will measure your ability to understand academic passages in English. You can take notes while reading, and you will be able to answer the questions in any order you want. You can skip a question and then return to it later. Most of the questions are worth one point, but the last question in each passage will be worth more than one point.
This part of the test will measure your listening ability when it comes to the conversations and lectures in academic settings. You will listen to a recording and then answer questions about it. You will be able to take notes while listening and you can listen to the recording only once. The questions must be answered in the presented order. During the exam, you will not be allowed to go back to the previous question. The questions will be about the main idea and the supporting details. Some questions will be about the speaker's purpose or attitude. Answer the questions based on what is stated or implied by the speaker. Now listen to the lecture. Welcome to today's lecture on the Nemunez River, a distinctive and important historical river in Lithuania. The Nemunez River is not only the longest and largest river in Lithuania, but it also has a significant impact on the nation's nature, history, and culture. Four key sections will make up today's discussion. We'll start by looking at the hydrology and geographical characteristics of the Nemunez River, the river rises in the hills and runs through Lithuania on its way to the Koronian Lagoon and ultimately the Baltic Sea. The Nemunez River has a drainage area of around 98,200 square kilometers and is about 937 kilometers long. It receives its nourishment from a vast network of rivers. We will examine the Nemunez River ecological importance. The river's plentiful supplies have historically supported a wide variety of vegetation and wildlife. The delicate balance of the river's ecosystems is now at risk due to human activities, including water extraction, dam construction, and pollution. It is depressing to see that a number of indigenous fish species, including the Atlantic sturgeon, are now in danger of going extinct as a result of these activities. Third, we shall discuss the Numenes River's historical and cultural significance. The lifeblood of countless Lithuanian communities that sprung up along its banks, this stream has long been a crucial transportation route. The river has seen the birth and fall of important medieval states, and it has even served as a battlefield in a number of wars. The Numenes River is now the source of much of Lithuanian mythology and has served as an inspiration for innumerable pieces of literature and art. We will last look at current initiatives to safeguard and conserve the Numenes River. The Numenes Delta Regional Park is one of many programs that have been started in recent years to reduce pollution and protect the river's ecosystems. The river has also been added to the Natura 2000 network of the European Union, which strives to protect the long-term survival of Europe's most priceless and imperiled species and environments. I want to underline the significance of ongoing vigilance in preserving the Numenes River before we wrap up. It is our duty to make sure that this essential artery of Lithuania's natural and cultural heritage is safeguarded for upcoming generations. What is the main idea of the lecture? How does the professor feel about the impact of human activities on the Nemanus River's ecosystems? What does the professor imply by mentioning the Nemanus Delta Regional Park and the Natura 2000 network?
Why does the professor say that the Nemanas River is at the heart of Lithuanian folklore? Which of the following are part of the lecture? Which of the following human activities has negatively impacted the Niemenas River's ecosystems? Now listen to the conversation between two people. Hello, I'm having some issues with my current class schedule, and I'd like to make a few changes. Sure, I'm happy to help. Can you tell me what specifically you'd like to change? Well, my workload is getting a bit overwhelming. I'm taking six courses this semester, and it's difficult for me to manage my time. It sounds like you might need to drop one or two courses. Have you identified which ones you'd like to drop? Yes, I have. I'd like to drop the physics and the history classes. They're both interesting, but I'm struggling to keep up. All right, I understand. Keep in mind that dropping classes could potentially impact your graduation timeline. I know, but I think I'd rather take an extra semester to graduate than risk failing these courses. That's a valid point. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of the possible implications. Thank you for the heads up. Another thing. I've heard that some students were able to change their physics class to an online format. Is that an option for me? I'm not entirely sure, but I can look into that for you. If it's possible, would you prefer to switch to an online format instead of dropping the class? Yes, that might be a better option for me. I think it would help me balance my time more effectively. All right, let me check on that for you. In the meantime, I'll start the process for dropping your history class. Thank you so much for your assistance. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm here to help you succeed. What is the main idea of the dialogue? What does the student imply when mentioning that some students switch their physics class to an online format? How does the student feel about potentially taking an extra semester to graduate?
What is the student counselor's attitude toward the student's concerns? What change is the student counselor going to make immediately for the student? Now listen to the lecture. We will look into the intriguing field of cold fusion, a subject that has piqued the interest of both the general public and experts. Contrary to the high temperature conditions that are generally required for classical fusion events, cold fusion is a hypothesized process that produces nuclear fusion reactions at ambient temperature or a temperature close to it. Let's first quickly go over nuclear fusion itself. When lighter elements such as hydrogen combine to form heavier elements such as helium, fusion takes place, releasing enormous quantities of energy in the process. The sun and other stars are powered by this process. Scientists have long sought to harness nuclear fusion for energy generation because it has the potential to produce clean, almost endless power. Several decades ago, when scientists started looking into the feasibility of producing nuclear fusion events at ambient temperature, the idea of cold fusion first came into being. The possibility of utilizing an almost limitless source of energy with little negative effects on the environment served as the main driving force behind these investigations. Numerous researchers have reported LENR, or Low Energy Nuclear Reactions, that could be caused by cold fusion as cold fusion research has continued throughout the years. However, a fundamental barrier to the field's advancement has been the absence of a broadly accepted theory explaining the mechanism underlying these reactions. The presence of minuscule contaminants or flaws in the experimental apparatus is one explanation for the inconsistent outcomes in cold fusion studies. It can be difficult to reliably duplicate the results because even minor changes in the environment can have an impact on the conclusion. There have been new initiatives to investigate the potential of cold fusion in recent years. It is hoped that technological developments and a better knowledge of nuclear reactions would lead to cold fusion being a practical energy source in the future. In their pursuit of cold fusion, researchers continue to push the limits of our knowledge because of the promise of clean, abundant energy. What is the main idea of the lecture? What does the professor suggest as a possible reason for varying results in cold fusion experiments?
According to the professor, what is a significant obstacle in advancing the field of cold fusion? According to the lecture, what is one possible explanation for the difficulty in reproducing cold fusion results? Why does the professor discuss low-energy nuclear reactions? Why does the professor say that scientists continue to explore cold fusion? Now listen to the conversation between two people. Hello. I was wondering if I could pay my tuition in installments. I'm having a bit of financial difficulty at the moment. Sure. Our university does offer a payment plan option for students in need. You can spread your tuition payments over the course of the semester. That's great to hear. How do I go about setting that up? You'll need to fill out a payment plan application form available on our website. Once submitted, our financial office will review it and then get back to you with further details. I appreciate that. Is there a deadline for submitting the application? Yes, the deadline for the upcoming semester is two weeks before classes start. However, I recommend applying as soon as possible to avoid any issues. Thank you for the information. I also wanted to ask if there's a possibility of receiving any financial aid. Our university does offer financial aid to eligible students you can find information about the different types of aid and the application process on our website as well. Great, I'll look into that. But what happens if I still struggle to make the payments even after setting up a plan and receiving financial aid? In such cases, we do our best to work with students to find a solution. It's important to maintain open communication with the financial office and let us know of any changes in your financial situation. I understand. Thank you so much You're for your welcome. help. Good luck with your application, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any more questions. What is the main purpose of this dialogue? What does the administrator imply about the payment plan application deadline?
what can be inferred about the student's financial situation? How does the administrator feel about helping the student with their financial concerns? According to the dialogue, what is the role of the financial office in handling tuition payment issues? Now listen to the lecture. Marcus Vitruvius Polio, also known as Vitruvius, was one of the most significant ancient Roman architects. Today, we'll talk about his work and influence. This talk will highlight his contributions to architecture, the influence of his work on later generations, and his well-known book, The Architectura. Vitruvius, the architect, engineer, and writer, who was born in the 1st century BCE, served as an advisor to Emperor Augustus. The only ancient work on architecture still in existence is his treatise, De Architectura. Our understanding of the fundamentals of ancient Roman architecture has been greatly influenced by this literature. In Vitruvius's opinion, an architect should be inspired by the firmitas, solidity, utilitas, utility, and venustas, beauty, principles. These ideas served as the cornerstone of classical architecture and have influenced architectural thought ever since. The Architectura is a ten-volume treatise that covers a variety of architectural issues, including the planning of cities, building construction, and material selection. Additionally, Vitruvius covers a variety of engineering topics, including aqueducts, bridges, and machinery. This treatise offers important details regarding the technical expertise and real-world experience of Roman Empire architects. The outline of the ideal human proportions is one of De Architectura's most well-known passages. According to Vitruvius, the human body can be enclosed within a perfect square and circle. The Vitruvian Man, a classic drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, was inspired by this idea. It has stood the test of time as a representation of the harmony and unity of the human form, which was a key idea in ancient architecture. Although Vitruvius wrote De Architectura for contemporary architects, its effect was felt well beyond the borders of the Roman Empire. The concepts of Vitruvian architecture were rediscovered and used during the Renaissance by painters and architects, including Michelangelo. Filippo Brunelleschi, and Leon Battista Alberti. They aim to imitate the harmony, equilibrium, and proportion of the classical structures of ancient Rome. Vitruvius and De Architectura continue to have an impact on modern architecture. When developing buildings, architects frequently discuss his three fundamental qualities, solidity, function, and beauty. Furthermore, modern architectural practice 
is still influenced by the Vitruvian concepts of symmetry, order, and proportion. In conclusion, Vitruvius's contributions to architecture have had a significant and enduring influence in addition to offering a thorough analysis of Roman architectural techniques, his treatise De Architectura also lays out the guiding principles that continue to influence architectural theory and practice today. Vitruvius's writings have had a lasting impact on the history of architecture and have motivated countless architects to pursue beauty, harmony, and practicality in their designs. What is the main idea of the lecture? What does the professor imply about the Vitruvian man? What did the professor mean when he said? In Vitruvius's opinion, an architect should be inspired by the firmitas, solidity, utilitas, utility, and venustas, beauty, principles. What did the professor mean when he said, The Vitruvian Man, a classic drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, was inspired by this idea. According to the lecture, which of the following are part of Vitruvius architectural principles and which are not? Based on the lecture, which of these statements about the Renaissance architects are accurate? This part of the test will measure your speaking ability. It will last around 20 to 30 minutes. You will answer four questions. The first question will be about a familiar topic. The other three will be about short conversations, lectures, and reading passages.
you can read and hear the lectures and paragraphs only once. You will see the time available for preparing the responses as well as the time to give your response on the bottom side of the screen. You have to stay within those time limits. Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. The increasing use of robots in factories will lead to massive job loss. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Speaking Task 2 You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. Hey Mark, you live in Section A, don't you? How do you feel about the recent announcement? I hate it. I think it's preposterous for them to be doing this. Why do you think that? Is it that big of an inconvenience? Yes, it most certainly is. Not only do I have to think about what to do with my parking on a Sunday afternoon. Again, it is a free day on which you rest but it will also be a pain to do so. Okay, I see your point that you want to relax on Sunday, but why is it difficult? Well, they say that there is a lot of parking on campus, and that is right when our section is open for students and when it's a weekday. But on the weekends, all the parking spaces are pretty much filled up. On Sunday, everybody is on campus in order to rest, so it will be a problem to find a parking space. I may even have to park all the way on the other side of the university. Yeah, that's a bummer. It certainly is. They should have constructed another parking next to the arena. This is not fair. I paid the same amount of money for campus housing, just like the other students. They have no right to make us do this. I will definitely complain. What will you tell them? I will ask them to refund part of the money I paid for campus housing. The parking was included in the contract I signed. 
How does the male student feel about the recent announcement and what does he plan to do about it? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Speaking Task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. It is difficult to define social cognition, but for the most part, it refers to the process of perceiving and understanding the other people and how we see the world around us. The mental processes we are talking about are involved in perceiving, remembering, and thinking about our social world. Social cognition is really important to us in order to be a functioning member of a society. Social cognition can vary from culture to culture, so we need to be in tune with our own environment in order to give good signals that we understand and that we will act accordingly. One example of this could be how we interpret a smile. In some cultures, when another member of society smiles at us, we could understand that as them showing interest in us, that they would want us to approach and start a conversation, and we could choose to do so. Whereas in another culture, a smile could be something that is required in any social occasion. So seeing it on someone else's face could simply mean that they are being polite and nothing else. So just smiling back would be an appropriate response. Physical contact is another thing we need to look at. In some places, physical contact in an everyday setting might be a sign of dominance and aggression. In such cultures, there is a lack of it. When a member of this society feels it, they think that they might need to fight or retreat. 
but in other cultures, physical contact is abundantly present and is a sign of affection and friendship. In these environments, a hand on the shoulder or a strong tap on the back might be an indicator of friendly intentions and not hostile ones, whereas in the previously mentioned culture, it would be perceived as an attack. Explain the concept of social cognition that the professor talks about. Use points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. Art can provide a great vehicle for protest. There have been many examples through history of open, as well as silent, dissent against the established order of things. Throughout the history of social movements and social revolt, art has always reacted against oppression, violence, injustice, and inequalities. Addressing social and political issues, as well as challenging the traditional boundaries and hierarchies that were imposed. Art can create space for the marginalized to be seen and heard. A lot of individuals have used their work to make a lasting impact in the global struggle against authoritarianism. Art has been used to elicit strong emotions, so what better way to mobilize and galvanize people against the things that are wrong in our surroundings? One great example of protest art was the fountain by a French artist called Marcel. It was a simple urinal with the name R. Mutt and the year 1917 written on it. 1917 was the year in which World War I was still raging on, R. Mutt sounds the same like the German word for poverty, and it suggested that the message of the artist was that this war was fought by the poor, whose lives seemed to have no values for the benefit of the rich. Banksy is another artist whose work is seen as a rebellion against consumerism. He made a painting which was set to be destroyed as it was auctioned off. He probably wanted to say how art doesn't have a price and shouldn't be sold as a commodity like that. But even so, the remains of said painting were sold for millions of dollars at that auction. Explain why art can be used as a tool for protest. Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep.
Start speaking after the beep. This part of the test will measure your writing ability in an academic environment. It will last around 30 minutes. You will write two responses. In the first task, which is called an integrated question, you will read a passage and then listen to a lecture. After that, you will answer a question based on what you read and heard. In the second task, which is called an academic discussion question, a professor will ask a question that you need to answer. Writing Task 1, Integrated Question. For this task, you will read a passage, and then hear a lecture about an academic topic. You will have three minutes to read the passage. You may take notes during the reading and the listening. The reading passage will be shown again, during the time when you are supposed to write, but you will listen to the lecture only once. You will have 20 minutes to write your response. Effective responses are usually between 150 to 225 words. You have three minutes to read. Start reading now.
Now listen to the lecture. Although this energy source is often lauded as a panacea for the world's energy crisis, I urge you to consider some of the lesser discussed realities of this technology. Firstly, let's address the notion of fusion energy being an abundant and sustainable energy source. Although the fuels used in fusion, deuterium and tritarium, are indeed abundant in nature, the claim that they can be easily extracted is misleading. The extraction of deuterium from seawater is an energy-intensive process, and tritarium is not naturally occurring, but must be bred from lithium inside the fusion reactor itself. Thus, while theoretically abundant, the practical accessibility of these fuels is far from simple or environmentally neutral. Secondly, the assertion that fusion energy can yield an incredibly high energy output is not entirely accurate. In principle, fusion reactions do have the potential to release massive amounts of energy. However, to date, no experimental fusion reactor has achieved a net energy gain, that is, more energy output than input. The conditions required for a sustainable fusion reaction are extremely challenging to achieve and maintain. And currently, we consume more energy in attempting to create these conditions than we gain from the reaction. Lastly, the supposed safety of fusion energy is debatable. While it's true that fusion does not produce long-lived radioactive waste or risk a meltdown, it's not entirely hazard-free. The high-energy neutrons produced during fusion can activate the materials of the reactor, making them radioactive. This means that although fusion energy may produce less radioactive waste than fission, it is not entirely devoid of this problem. In conclusion, while fusion energy holds immense theoretical promise, it's important to be aware of the significant challenges and misconceptions surrounding this technology. It is not as straightforward or as benign as it is often portrayed, and it is crucial that we continue to critically evaluate its development and potential impacts. Summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they cast doubt on specific points made in the reading passage. You have 20 minutes to write. Start writing now.
In this task, you will need to answer a question posed by a professor. You will also be able to see how two other students answered it. You will have 10 minutes to write your response. Effective responses will have at least 100 words.
If you find these videos helpful, you can come and support us on Patreon. You can gain access to ad-free content as well as more tests. Your support is appreciated.